verses 1 and 2. It's also printed on the bulletin, the page 2 of the bulletin. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. May Lord add rich blessings of the reading of his word. Thank you. Hello again, church. This is Debbie and the children's final Sabbath with us. And they will be missed dearly. I'm not sure if Neil is going to be staying on for a little while, are you? OK. Um, if we don't see each other again down here, then we'll see each other in the glory land, heaven.
Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Last time I said that music can touch, inspire, not only. It can teach, it can heal. Thank you, Debbie and Bijur. What, what a match. If God can do something out of nothing, then how much more he can do out of something. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, my transitioning from the Potomac Conference to the Upper Columbia Conference will take place on August 1st, which means that July 31st will be our last day of working with this church. Uh, I'd like uh, to ask the board to stay just for a few minutes, and we'll meet at the, in the library room just, just for, for one question. So please remember that and wait until I greet people and join you, and we'll consider one question. Now we need to do something special. I just heard this morning from Brother Kevin Wright that his daughter Maya, is Maya here? Maya on Wednesday leaving for South Africa missionary work and I heard also that Stephanie Barron is already there I mean in Africa not in, in the same exactly place exact, I mean same place but in Africa and uh, don't you think that we should ask for a special blessing from the Lord and in, encourage them and pray for them Maya would, would you please come a step forward here and join us here and I also ask Elder James Johnson Yeah. What a step, huh? Amen. What a move. Maya, I am pretty sure you realize what you are doing. <laughs> and I know you are excited. And this is going to be a great, great endeavor. And, and of course, you are doing God's work by that. And you need special guidance, special blessings. And I'm pretty sure that is your hope. And otherwise, you wouldn't even have thought about it. So I'd like to read something from the Word of God, and uh, something encouraging, and also uh, then uh, after that, uh, we will kneel down, if you don't mind, and Elder James Johnson will pray for you, as well as for Stephanie Barron. And the word that I want to read for you are taken from Psalm 36. I'm pretty sure after this, after this service, you will go and read it again. And probably on Wednesday before you leave, you will read it again. And I, I wouldn't mind at all if you do that. <clears throat> and it, it says here, Thy mercy, O Lord. I'm reading from verses 5 all the way through 9, Psalm 36. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reacheth unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep, O Lord. Thou preserveth man and beast. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. And thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. May God bless you. Let's kneel. Heavenly Father, loving Lord, we come before you today humbly, but confidently. We have been allowed to watch Maya and Stephanie grow and mature and uh, go off to college. And still, Father, you have a plan for them in the theme of Jeremiah 29, a hope and a future. And we are allowed to see that hope and that future go forth in a service-oriented way from this part of the world to an unknown part of the world for them. 
Father, we know that you see all and know all, and so we bring them before you, yes. asking for your continued watch care over them, Lord, mm -hmm. asking for uh, the things that they endeavor to do, that they would line up with your will. And Father, we ask that we would be able to see again them here back safely. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that we would be able to hear of all that you did through them and be encouraged and be motivated because it has said that a young person shall lead them. Mm -hmm. So Father, guide them, touch them, direct them, and let us be able to see and talk again Amen. after they come back from all that you've asked them to do. We ask these things in the precious, mighty, and holy name of Jesus Christ the righteous. Amen. Amen. God be with you. You probably have already guessed just by looking at the title that uh, today's message will be the continuation of the one that was preached last Sabbath because that conversation needs to be <laughs> finalized. Last week, we talked about healing from venom of sin. You remember that, right? By looking at crucified Jesus. Just like Israelites, when they looked at that serpent lifted up by Moses, and while they were looking, they were being healed. So, but in, in that process of healing, there is something very crucial that I think deserves our attention and needs to be discussed about this morning. And that's what we're going to do. Have you ever struggled with situations when, when you repented, then you asked for forgiveness, and you believed that you were forgiven, but after a while you sinned again? You repeated that again. Have you? I have. And sometimes, not one time, several times. I repeated the same mistakes or sins again and again and again. And have to, have to come back, repent, be forgiven in order after a while to do that again. After being healed, so to speak. I struggle with that. And of course, the question here is why was this or still, I mean, is happening? Why? It shouldn't be like that, right? Was then healing just not all the way that the Lord provided? Or there is something wrong with us? I think this is a, a, a crucial question and deserves our time. Don't you think? We need to find out why, after we repent, after we get forgiveness, I mean, being forgiven, we repeat it again. Well, some people think that it's, it's normal. Well, they say, it's, it's normal for this sinful nature, so it will last for a while, it will continue for a while, then we'll go away little by little. I, I have a problem with that, honestly. And here why. If this was normal, Jesus wouldn't have said to that woman from John, John chapter 8. I will come back to that story during the sermon. Uh, you don't have to open it now. He wouldn't have said to that woman, go and what? Sin no more. He didn't say that. You know what, my daughter, you will, you will do that again. Sometimes, maybe one or two, three, three more times. But then little by little, it will go away. Don't worry. <laughs> he did, I, I wish that was the case. Then we would feel much better. Well, it's normal. He didn't say that way. What he, what he said, go and sin no more. He wouldn't have said that if, I mean, he did not or hadn't provided, besides forgiveness, also power to do that. Strength 
to do that. You cannot demand something from somebody, something that that somebody does not have, or you don't help him with that. You, you can't. When he said, go and sin no more, that means, that means he provided her. At that very moment, power to do that. Whether she claimed that power or not, that's a different question. Now, I, and now I think we, we, you agree that it's a very important question. We need to find out why, why this is happening. Obviously, it's important to claim that power. That's where the problem is. And let's study together and learn what should we do. Let's pray. It's important because it slows down our spiritual growth. Indeed. Maybe that's why we grow so slowly. By, by the time, I mean, by the, considering the years that we know the Lord, we should be maybe on a higher level than we are spiritually. Let's pray. Father, indeed, we would like to know, learn this morning why after being healed, after our repentance, sincere repentance, we sometimes or even often go back to the same mistakes again and again. We would like to find today the answer to that question. Not only the answer, but remedy. Please bless us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, a week ago, we talked about all kinds of venoms. Remember the venom of uh, pride, arrogance, venom of uh, <clears throat> discomfort or frustration and fears. And it, it, the list was incomplete. I told you that last week, and I am repeating again, was way incomplete. Anything that can be categorized is a venom, and venom is not just venom, but it's deadly venom. We, we talked about it. And you know, you remember which one was a favorite or, or is favorite, Satan's favorite? Discouragement and fears. <laughs> Discouragement and fears. Why? Because when you are discouraged, you don't want anything. You don't want to believe. You don't want to go to church. You simply leave. And, and that's, that's why it's dangerous and fears. They paralyze us. Let me share, of course, most of those fears that Satan causes by, I, I mean, they, I mean they, they, they are just caused by imagined dangers which are not even there. But he makes us to believe that they are there. Just let me bring one example to cheer you up a little bit, and it's, this is real. Uh, and uh, maybe that will help us to uh, understand what, what, what this discussion is all about. In my childhood, I was stung by yellow jackets, first time, and that was the worst time, on my first day of first school day. My very first day. In the morning, I went out of to our garden and picked up some roses, and they, that's where they were, these yellow jackets. And imagine me with a, a swollen you know, hands and face, and, in that pain, I'm going to first time to our school. My mother holds my hands, and I'm coming there. So since then, I, 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 I'm always uncomfortable when there's yellow jacket flying around me. Just like Lisa is uncomfortable when she sees cockroaches. In spite of she can squeeze, I told you before, squeeze a yellow jacket with two fingers without thinking, no problem. I am not afraid of snakes. I can chase them without thinking. But I have a problem with this little creature, which is called yellow jacket. Now imagine my fear when in Michigan about 15 or 16 years ago, I saw huge monster fatty, I thought they were yellow jackets. Forgot again their name. Donis, would you remind? No, 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 the one that uh, harmless. Cicadas. Cicada. When I saw it, 
I never seen in Russia, in Armenia. Maybe they have it, but not where I, I lived. And I thought, my calculation was very simple. If little things like this, little yellow jacket can sting, that painful, and I remember how painfully that was, what this monster would do to me. <laughs> I can imagine its sting should be 10 times bigger than the one. That's what I thought, you see. And, and they were all around our house in Michigan that year. I was so afraid. I thought, I thought it's only around my house, that's what I thought. <laughs> and of course I thought about punishment, judgments, I confessed you know, all my sins again, all over again, whatever I could remember. This is serious. And I was in such fear, but I was embarrassed to share this, of course, with others. However, I asked my neighbor, who happened to be another immigrant just like I was, who said, yeah, I saw those monsters, be careful. I mean, they're very dangerous. Sometimes you need to find the right person to ask things. <laughs> That's very important. So I saw some holes on the ground. I thought they were living there. I put, put some gasoline there, burned it, and poured water into it. Did everything to The more I did, the, the more I saw them. It was a scary thing. And then, I, of course, I remember one of uh, 10 Egyptian plagues, then one of seven <laughs> Revelation plagues. That was, and then how happy I was when the next year, I didn't see them again. Praise the Lord, that's taken from me. Meaning, I am okay now with, with the Lord. That's, <laughs> those creatures are gone. Now imagine my terror when a month ago I saw them again uh, all over my patio there. That those old fears came back. Now which sins I should, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Confess, and, and I was really concerned. Then uh, I warned uh, the family members, and my youngest son Samuel laughed. He said, why are you laughing? He said, Dad, they're not uh, dangerous. They don't have stink. They don't stink. Are you sure about that? Yeah. He said, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure, I said. He, and he called the names, Sekaida. I always forget, well, obviously, it's, well, fear does not paralyze only muscles of the body, but also paralyzes your brain, your, your memory. That's why I keep forgetting it. I said, are you sure? Yeah, he said, he opened the, uh, the internet and showed to me images, and there were many, and he found, some of them were darker, but the one that I have, it's more yellow, look like more like yellow jacket. So he said, Dad, don't worry, don't worry, unless he said, well, he was obviously playing with me, I did not realize. Unless, he said, they think that you are a tree, then they will chew you up. <laughs> that didn't help much. I said, what if they think that I am a tree? So I better move all the time so they will not think that I am not a tree. Not to stand still, you know. Well, of course, uh, Sister Donis helped me out, and she told me that they're absolutely harmless. I don't have to worry. And they come every 15 or 16 years. Uh, and that's when I, I saw first time in Michigan, about 16 or 17 or 15. I don't remember exactly. Yeah, <laughs> but I will never forget that. However, however, I still ask question, why every 16, 17, why not 70? or even 700 years. I would be more comfortable with that fact. Whatever that is, it's imagined fear. Oh. I better stand there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's the one. That's like. <laughs> and some of them are big. And in, in Fredericksburg, they were following me everywhere. I thought they were following me. I did not realize that they're just simply everywhere. And they fall, and I've seen many dead. Now, now I'm not afraid, at least uh, just a little bit, maybe. <laughs> Imagine sins, and that Satan uses that whole lot. Danger is not there at all. We don't have to worry. Trust the Lord. That's so. So why do we, but back to our subject, repeat the same sins? I heard also people saying, well, because our human nature 
cannot do otherwise. And while we're in this body, we will always sin, so we don't have to worry. And that's, it, and that's nice, nice lullaby, I think, created by Satan himself. We don't have to worry. We have sinful body, sinful nature. It's natural for us to sin. We don't have to worry. Nice lullaby created by Satan. Obviously, 100% wrong. Wrong theology. We, we, uh, to those who think that way, I would like to remind that Jesus was in, a, in such a weak body, just like we are, and never sinned. So it's not just possible. It's mandatory. So the blood of Jesus... Brothers and sisters, what I learned while studying this question, the blood of Jesus does not save us in our sins, but it saves us from our sins. See the difference? That's what the word says. The blood of Jesus does not save us in our sins, but saves us from our sins. Frees us. Cleanses us. That's the, that's the message, right? But again, the question is still there. Why, then, we keep repeating them? That's the, the, the way is the problem. Let me bring you an example. Maybe you heard this story in a different context. A man was given a lottery ticket. I know this is not the best illustration, but it will, it will help some. I have some others. And uh, he did not believe in gambling, and of course he thought it was gambling money, so he did not believe it. And he put somewhere, it was a gift, and he put somewhere in my papers and forgot about it. A little uh, over a year, one year passed, and he, uh, digging in his papers, found that ticket. And just out of curiosity, he traced back those numbers, winning numbers, and discovered that he was the winner. But it was not claimed. Therefore, it was, and it was too late already to claim. He missed it. It was gone forever. Because they, they have due time. One year, I believe. So, so it was gone. It was in his hands. <laughs> The money was in his hands, right? Or the opportunity. For more than one year, he was not aware of that. He never checked, he never claimed. So he lost. But, but, but that's not the best illustration. As I said, I have some other examples. And I, don't get me wrong, I'm not promoting now buying a lottery or, or advertising or encouraging. No, obviously, <clears throat> Uh, the man who gave him uh, as a gift was not a Christian man. Now, but I, there is another story. This is, I read it, real story also. A man received a check from one of his rich relatives. Actually, it was just an envelope. They didn't have a very good relationship, and he didn't care about that envelope. So after four months, that relative died. When he heard about it, he remembered about that envelope. He opened it. There was a big check to him from that relative. With guess what was the due time to claim it. <laughs> Ninety days. And it passed. He could not claim it anymore. Some of the relatives got the rest, whatever, all what that was there, and that's it. So was not, was in his hands, was so close to him, he did not claim it. Now let's read our Psalm 32, 2, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 32, verses 1 and 2. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. 
and in, in whose spirit there is no guile. You know what the last part means? <laughs> I, I studied, a, 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 again, that last part kind of didn't match. Blessed is the one whose sins are forgiven. That's what David says, Psalm 32. It's called one of his repentance psalms after what he did to Uriah. That's when he wrote this psalm and, and 51. We know that very well. So David is writing, blessed, the one whose sins are forgiven. Iniquities are not counted anymore. In whose heart there is no guile. I studied Hebrew and discovered that whose heart is clean now from sins. Because that's where it starts. The root of sin, that's where it starts, in our hearts, in our minds. Now it was clean because it was clean. He did not do that again. Do you remember him doing that again? No. We don't see it. <laughs> so the, this, this happiness of blessed means happy. Can be full only when you accept forgiveness, number one, first part. And the second part is the power to be clean, free from it. That's the problem, brothers and sisters. We claim the first part happily. We grab that cash and run away happily. I got it. Without grabbing the second part of the same package, which is the power. In a minute, we'll talk about that. What does it mean to claim that power? But that's where the problem is. That's why we, we grab it, we're happy, we pray it, we feel free, kind of, easy. That guilt feeling is gone. We praise God. Thank you, Lord, for, for giving me in Jesus what I did without taking the second part of that package. And that's why after a while we fall into that trap again. We repeat that sin again and again and again. I wonder what David would say looking at me or Paul. He would ask, Gregor, how many years you are in, in church? I would say, well, I was baptized in 1975. 75? Wow. That makes how many years? 30 or 20 something? 30, 30 something, right? And you're still in that poor spiritual condition? What's wrong with you, brother? Have you ever claimed the power of Jesus? Have you ever exercised? What is this? Why you are sinning again? Why you are stumbling again? Why you are stealing again? Lying again? Or other things? Why? What's going on? I wonder what, what they would say. So, claiming the power, brothers and sisters. Claiming the power. Now back to that woman. I promise that we will uh, go back to that story. It was brought to Jesus. Of course, caught in sin or sinning. Or ashamed, standing there, embarrassed. The whole crowd, and this is by the temple, looking at her. I believe her eyes were down or closed. She couldn't see, she couldn't see anybody around her. And then all these accusations, and then Jesus, in the end, asks, woman, and she opens her eyes, where are those who accuse you? Where are they? She, she looks around. They're gone. Nobody's here. Nobody judges you? Looks like not. No. And I don't judge you. Go and sin no more. The power was provided there. Well, we have revelation that's saying that she repeated that six or seven more times until she was completely healed. That's encouraging a little bit. At least we're not the only ones. There is hope. If there was hope for her, there is hope for us. Obviously, she missed something. 
there. But that's where the problem is. We, when Jesus forgives, he gives also power to overcome that sin. Right there. It doesn't take years. No. It takes years. It's a matter of life, some people say, because we have many, many faults, not just one. But when, when for one sin, it takes years to overcome. That's not normal, brothers and sisters. That is not normal. If I am angry, was angry man, have a problem with anger, and it's still there for so many years, that is not normal. If I am still struggling with other issues, but I overcame anger right away, I overcame other issues, addictions, and all the other stuff, I got rid of it a long time ago, they don't bother me anymore, but I have other issues to deal with, and, and this is ongoing thing, because the Holy Spirit reveals, reveals, and we are always in new circumstances, and they, they, it's, it's, the sin is really almost endless, almost, but not completely. So, but when we struggle with the same sin for years and years and years, how they can we, we handle all the other sins? That's not normal, brothers and sisters. Because we never claimed that power. Now let's talk about what that does it mean to claim. Okay, when we, repeat, when we repent and look at Jesus and realize that we are forgiven, we should also realize, listen carefully, we should also realize that together with forgiveness, Jesus provides power. For healing. We should believe in it and never doubt. I like prayers like this. Of course, if they mean that, Lord, thank you for listening to my prayer and thank you for solving my problem and thank you for freeing me for that sin, from that sin, sorry. I like prayers like that. If, of course, the, pr the praying person believes in what he's saying. That's all. We have to believe it. You have a problem, anger issue, kneel down, repent, ask for forgiveness, and the forgiveness will be given. And, and, when you, and at that very moment also, power to overcome that sin will be given. And if you don't take it, that is your fault. Take it, grab it. Say, thank you, Lord. I have it. I believe that from now on, I will be more careful. I will not do the same again. At least in few of, of things that I was struggling with before a long time ago. I am free completely. I was able to quit, quit in one day. I'm talking about, about alcohol. I quit, you know, I, you heard it 127 times from me. I quit in one day. I said it, I quit. Then my question is, if it is possible with such a strong addiction, and it is strong, imagine drinking from six years old all the way to, to 25, nonstop, came up to two bottles, three bottles a day, quit in one day, in one prayer, after one prayer, forever, up to now. I cannot believe how. I, I don't have that strong will. But it happened. Well, if it happened with such a strong addiction, can't the same happen with other addictions or other issues? Of course it can. So if it doesn't, then problem is not in the Lord, brothers and sisters. Problem is not in our sinful nature. Don't blame it. Let's remember for once and forever, body does not sin. That's lullaby, another lullaby, Satan's lullaby. But, well, it's, it's sinful nature. What, what else you can do? Don't believe it. Don't buy it. Sins come from where? <laughs> there is no sin in my hand. No sin in my leg. Don't blame it. Or you went to the wrong place because you sinful body. Or because my leg likes to go in that direction. Or my foot suddenly, boom, turns to the left. Goes where it shouldn't go. And I'm trying to hold it. Hey, don't go. But it pulls me. Because it's sinful. Its nature is like that. <laughs> or my hand pulls me that way. Hey, stop. I don't want that. But it does. doesn't ask my permission. Come on. 
comes from our hearts and minds. Don't blame your sinful nature. Because by doing that, we're undermining the grace of God. Undermining the gift of Jesus. Like as if we're saying, you did not give it to me. Remember, Paul is complaining. Why you are complaining as if you did not receive it? Remember that, those words? That's what exactly he means. Don't complain that you don't have it. You are given it. Just claim it. Believe it. Take it. Grab it. And you will be free. I learned that for myself. Then, then, well, I'm still learning, <laughs> to be honest. But I can understand now what David meant when he said, Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven, in whose heart there is no more traces of that sin. That's what it means. It's free, gone, clean. It's such a blessing, such a happiness, such a deep satisfaction you cannot describe. There is no word can describe precisely that feeling. So the power of Jesus always comes together with forgiveness, that healing process. Let's take the whole package. Uncle and, and nephew, and nephew uh, lost his business. Uncle was trying to, the uncle was trying to direct him, telling him always what to do. He never listened, and his uncle was experienced businessman and rich man. Young man thought he, as many young men do, he was smarter than his uncle. He never followed, he lost everything. Then his uncle, then he came to his uncle, asking for help. <laughs> You had prodigal son story and children's story, right? They were, he lost everything, he came to his father. What, by the way, his father did? Do you remember prodigal son? He forgave all what he did before and what else he did? New dress, new shoes, new ring. You know what that ring meant with seal? What that meant? He passed his business to his son. He gave him an opportunity to start all over again. And of course, with that ring, he gave him sufficient sum of money that he could start all over again. One thing is to forgive. Now back to this uncle and nephew. Yes, he lost. Now he is able to pay the debt. Debt because his uncle gave that check, helped him out. But then, but then what? But after that, he needs more money to continue, to start, to restore, right? So his uncle gave some instructions there. He said, now this time, if you listen to me, you will receive that money to start all over again. He gave, now him, he, he gave him condition. And the, the, the nephew followed that. And then uncle gave him another bigger check, investment, and helped him. So his business was restored, he was back to normal prosperity and learned his lesson. So when God forgives, it's, that's not enough, not sufficient enough. He also provides help for you to be restored, to have a new start, new life. And when that new life comes in, brothers and sisters, it gives such a joy, such a satisfaction. That's why David says, blessed, he knew what he was saying. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this second part of your healing. Thank you for not just forgiving, but providing us your power to overcome our sins, to have a new start. We praise you, Father. Help us always remember that and claim what belongs to us. In Jesus' name, amen. We invite you to stand and join us in singing our closing hymn, Hymn 163 at the Cross. At last, 
Yeah.